Kia ora koutou, welcome to Whiteboard Friday. This week we're looking at the question, can we continue to grow without stuffing the planet? You'll like my diagrammatic representation of the planet there with my massively poor drawing of New Zealand. This study talks about uh, how between 1993 and 2009, the world economy grew by 153%. So that's grown by one and a half times over that period, got one and a half times bigger. Population uh, has increased by around about 23%, so that is starting to slow. And most importantly, our ecological footprint, so the amount of land that we require to meet our needs, has only grown by 9%. Now this is a big deal because in the past, as we have grown, uh, as our economy has grown, we've tended to use more resources and stuff more and more of the planet at the same time. But we're starting to see that, what economists call decoupling, which means that we're, we're seeing growth without necessarily a, a growth in environmental degradation at the same time. Now, that's not to say that we don't have a massive challenge. What the study suggests is that roughly three quarters uh, of the, the, the planet has been significantly altered by uh, human economic activity. And in those areas that are species rich, that have a really good environment, actually 97% of those areas have been altered by human economic activity. So they've been hugely impacted uh, by humankind and our quest for economic growth. But hopefully, if this trend continues, we can continue to grow without stuffing the planet at the same time. And this is quite a big deal uh, because on one hand it says to growth advocates uh, such as the National Party that we don't have to have dumb and dirty growth, we can have clean and clever growth uh, instead. One of the, the, the two major ways that we've achieved that we achieved this decoupling over this time was firstly urbanization. So that's getting more people to live in cities and building up, not out. So the unitary plan is a good step in that direction, although we are continuing to sprawl. And secondly, good government policy. So government policy really does matter. It, environmental regula regulation doesn't have to kill economic growth. It can, it has actually been shown that it can encourage economic growth by getting firms to be more responsible and, uh, and actually develop expertise in environmentally sustainable methods. The other message that this tells us is really to the green movement, that we don't have to go backwards, that we can continue to have prosperity, we can continue to grow without continuing to use resources. And a major way of that is by following the cyclical uh, economy. So everything that we use gets recycled, gets used again to make a different product in the future. Sure, we can't continue to dig stuff up and use it because we'll run out that way, but we can continue to reuse reduce, recycle. These, using these approaches, we can actually continue to have uh, economic prosperity. At least, it looks promising. Thanks for watching that right till the end. If you'd like to stay in touch with what we do here at the Morgan Foundation, click here or visit us at morganfoundation.org.nz. Ideas to action.